Welcome to the God Project by William J. Eisenman, D.D. And the title of this uh, reading is God's Economics versus Capitalism. In America, a lot of people treat capitalism as if it were a religion. They also see it as a bedrock of our democracy. If one steps out of line and dares criticize capitalism or offer a better way, one is called a liberal, a pinko, a commie. Yet Red China today loves capitalism and is totalitarian. Capitalism hasn't led to democracy there. Capitalism is not God-ordained. Capitalism simply exemplifies the way of Git which the Bible makes clear is the way of Satan. In the Greek, God's love is described as agap, agapi, or agape. And God's way of life is the way of give. It is clear that the capitalist system breaks God's law. Our capitalist system is built on credit. In the millennium, there will be no credit. There will be industry, money, technology, and much more, but there will not be famine, starvation, or poverty. There will be universal prosperity. In the millennium, there will be no militaries, prisons, police, security systems, and worthless government programs. In the millennium, wealth will not be misused to enrich the few at the expense of the many. There will be no stealing, lying, or coveting. All will be based on the giving standard. There will be a fixed standard of values, and values will never change. There will be no speculating in commodities or gambling on other people's abilities. Commerce and money will operate on an international level, the same in all nations. There will be one language. God's system involving money will be stable, no fiat currency. In the world tomorrow, there will be no stock markets, world banks, centers of finance, insurance companies, mortgage companies, loan companies, no credit, and no time payments. Wealth will be determined by assets, not money in the bank. God's economics does not allow for some to make gobs of money off the labors of others. Each person will be rewarded fairly according to his work. People will purchase only what they need and only when they can afford it. In the millennium, there will be no interest payments, no usury, and as stated earlier, no credit. God does not like usury. Deuteronomy 23, verse 19. You shall not charge interest to your brother. No interest on food, money, or anything that is lent out at interest. Verse 20 promises that God will bless those who obey. It is clear that credit card companies do not obey God. God forbids charging interest to the poor or anyone. This would include student loans. In Nehemiah 5, verses 1 through 12, even 1% interest is condemned. Only foreigners can be charged interest to prevent them from taking advantage of God's people. Leviticus 25, verses 35 through 38. How much interest are your credit card companies charging you? Our banking system is built on usury. God does not want people borrowing money 
Interest takes money from the poor and gives it to the rich. So there is the answer as to what is wrong in our economy today. There will be no corruption in government in the millennium because there will be no humans ruling in government. Only Jesus and resurrected spirit beings will be in charge. In the millennium, only worthwhile enterprises will be allowed. There will be no grants or subsidies. And there will be a conservative Republican dream come true. There will be no taxes. But there will be a universal tithe of 10% to carry on the work of God. Everyone will own property, Micah 4, verse 4. Families will become stronger and more united. Communities will become more social and more interdependent. God's economics provides a jubilee where once every 50 years all debts, private and public, are canceled. Leviticus 25, verses 8 through 16. Also, land that was bought must be returned to the original owner. Property values go down according to how many years remain before it must be returned to its original owner. This does not allow for speculative land development or property inflation. Families will develop their own land, not developers. God's economics provides for a perfect ecosystem. Leviticus 25 verses 1 through 4 and 20 through 22. Also the land Sabbath will be honored. Land will be rested in the seventh year. Ezekiel 16 verse 5. What the Bible makes clear is that human economic laws are contrary to God's economic laws. Our capitalist system is in no way God-ordained. With all these criticisms coming from God's mouth, is it possible that right-wing Christian Republicans might see the light and repent of their wrongdoing? Or will they call God a liberal, pinko, and a commie? The end.